And we're live ish. I still need to Welcome, guys. welcome, welcome <laughs> to another episode of Call Soul. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I actually named this episode Better Call Saul. <laughs> Oh boy. There's actually a good reason for that too. But bonnet a cow, everyone who's waiting in the audience, and I know you're there. Thank you for showing up. Um, yeah, we got another Pathfinder game today. And uh, I'm trying to remember exactly where we left off. I think the last Everyone, thing was... Everyone's asleep, and asleep after the drinking game. <laughs> right, the drinking contest and the dog outside. Right. And so... I was going to spend the night staring at the orc trying to sleep. <laughs> because, you know, that's exactly what the orc wants. Uh, the, orc, the orc drank the contents of the uh, water that so. Uh, orcs uh, out there. But I the see. orc's male, so his consent doesn't really matter. Oh, that orc, okay. <laughs> oh, it must really suck being enslaved by something that doesn't sleep. Doesn't need food, doesn't need to do anything but think. Uh, speaking of which, uh, you are not in uh, Roll20, Fade. I am working on it right now. Alright. Uh, but yes, uh, the mayor is recovering, uh, probably back at his cottage. Uh, the town is actually pretty happy with you, which came as a surprise after the previous session. <laughs> I was concerned they were going to kill you all, or just chase you out of town. Um, in fact, I believe uh, Saul has a a possible sutress in the in the temple. <laughs> Although be careful, because she is a bit more chaotic than the rest of y'all. And uh, what's her name? Idra is still wandering about around the town, doing things, and you guys haven't caught up with her yet. But you guys need to get back to Waterdeep by, well, today to meet up with your individual. Hmm? It is the third day, after all. Well, I'm going to go down to the tavern and ask the, tav the tavern keeper to prepare a proper breakfast for the team. Uh... She agrees and gets her cook to go out and collect uh, collect eggs and starts preparing uh, some freshly cut meats and, you know, all the things a good growing kobold needs to eat. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, not uh, just uh, having food, uh, buying food for myself, but for the entire team, so... Well, yes, uh, this is going to be part of the, uh, the kindness that the town is, is providing for you. And, uh, when uh, the, uh, so I, I explained to the tavern keeper that uh, if he does a good job, there is a tip for him. It's the same woman from last night. Uh, her name's Anna. Uh -huh. her, 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 her name's Anna Blackbutter, and it's her inn. Her family is in rather. And when she catches a glimpse of the very large orc and you know slightly smaller orc. With y'all, she says to double up on the uh, double up on the eggs and meat. She calls back to the kitchen. Better double up on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, there's still a dog sitting outside. In fact, it is causing patrons to complain because the dog is barking at everyone who goes through. Yes, Not your dog. <laughs> uh, has the food been served yet? Uh, no, they're still preparing it, okay. but people uh, people are filing in because a lot of people in town get their breakfast here. Right. Seth, uh, Seth wanders down and uh, out the door and gives the dog some pets and said, uh, says, uh, I'll bring you some food when it's ready, but shh, you don't want to get people mad. Sorry, <clears throat> my mind's a little, I just woke up, so... <laughs> I, I too just woke up. Uh, the dog's uh, tail wags and it sits down and waits for you. Okay, he wanders back inside. I'm going Do you to have any idea how long it'll take before the breakfast is ready? Uh, it shouldn't be too long, like 30 minutes to an hour, the period of a short rest. 
<laughs> okay, I'm going to collect my things from the carpenter and from the mm -hmm. shrine. Right, uh, crap, I didn't take note of what you were... I thought it you already a took those. Bowl. Right, thank you. A bowl with the, uh, a bowl with, uh, signature and insignia. A signature on the bottom, insignia at the bottom of the bowl, rings inside of it. And then the uh, other one was a mask with, uh, one of the runes carved inside. Right, which rune did you want carved into that again? I'm sorry, my notes are a bit of a mess today. Uh, it was negation. Right, okay. Um, well, uh, they are still getting ready at the temple, however, the, uh, the, the one cleric is, is there, and she's quite happy to see you. Uh, yes, uh, smile, and I think I'm going to spend some time just chatting with her, if it's okay. Alright, uh, just... Yeah. Trying to pull Saying up the last of my notes. Yeah, in particular, yes. Uh, she's, uh, she says, uh, she, when she sees you coming in, she says, Oh, I'll have those for you in just a moment. Uh, and finishes sorting out her desk. She's setting up the altar in the back, all sorts of small things that need to be done. Uh, and then she goes back over to, to her desk, and in the bottom drawer she was keeping uh, the nearly finished products. Uh, she informs you that she didn't have enough time to finish the bowl last night. However, she did do the uh, the mask with the runes. And when she gives you the mask, it is a uh, two different types of wood. Um, I'm not sure of the wood around this area off the top of my head, but essentially a, a very white wood and a very dark wood uh, for both halves of the face. And on the inside of the mask, right where the third eye would be, right, you know, right on your forehead, is a, uh, it's, uh, most of a circle with, uh, uh, three vertical lines through it and a single line crossing, uh, diagonally through it. And she says, here's your, uh, here's your mask of negation, or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, uh like smiles warmly when she hands it over to you. And she says, I, I still had to finish carving the bowl. Uh, there's still a few little details left uh, that should be ready uh, in a couple of hours. I think it was a carpenter that was going to do the bowl. Uh, I had him carve out the bowl, but not do the uh, the fine handwork. Given uh, that okay. I'm used to car given that I given that I'm used to carving runes, I figured that I would also carve the insignias for you, the, the insignias and the design for your bowl. This is her talking, uh, what, was the, what was the name of the god again? Uh, it was Nephis. Yeah, Nephis. Nephis. Yeah. Nephis. Yeah, it's important because I need to understand the fact that I'm using Nef Nephis when I add stuff to it because I can use... This is, this is funny, now the mask is doing illusion and uh, destruction. It's not a little bit funny. Well, it, oh, it is... Would be fu funnier yeah. if it was life and destruction. Well, it, yeah. it is, uh... It certainly is a mask that would honor, uh, my dear Nethys, she says. Uh, yeah. commenting on the, uh, duality of Nethys' nature. Yeah, it's part of why it shows uh, Nephis, because of all the masks they had there, you don't want to use a mask that is opposed to what you want to do with it. Uh, she continues cleaning up, trying to maintain conversation with you, but you, you can tell that in the mornings the, uh, the All Faiths Temple is pretty busy. Uh, getting things ready for you know anyone who might be ready might be coming in for medical reasons such as holding too tightly on a poisoned note that is uh, based on skin contact. <laughs> uh, but she uh, she looks up at you and asks uh, um, if you're going to be in town for much longer. No, sadly I need to be in Waterdeep today, so once my team has eaten, we are going to hurry back to Waterdeep. 
Uh, she, it's a very long, it's a very long trip. Do you intend on taking a horse and carriage, or are you just going by foot? Uh, we wish to uh, take horse and carriage if we could. We still have to do, finish something in the forest as well. I uh, don't expect those uh, narrator guards are going to actually do something. Well, Anna over at the inn next door, she, she rents out uh, carriages uh, uh, for travelers if you need a trip back. Thank you. Uh, um, I was curious, also the rules you make, uh, how much does it cost for you to make them? <coughs> Inscription tends to cost about mm, 20 gold. Uh, uh, just making the rules. That's what, how much do you need? What do you need to do it? Well, I mean, a rune itself is a pre. Uh, I mean, runes are, you know the knowledge of the clerics and priests and that they they either inscribe them for other people to use or or uh, carve them themselves uh, in order to apply that rune so all you need is uh, some proper wood and you can carve a rune yes <clears throat> is uh does all the materials uh, have other effects on the rune uh it only if the material is uh, previously enchanted. So, if I got you Mithril, for instance? Uh, I would have to speak to the smith in town, but I could work with Mithril, yes. I'm just curious, that is all. By the way, good luck getting that... Mithril. <laughs> Yeah, but it was just an idea. I just realized that I likely will come visit you later when I got all the focus items I would want to put a rune on. I would very much appreciate it, she says, smiling a bit before turning to start lighting the candles around the area. I toss a uh, silver into each for, for each of the uh, holy people in here. Okay, it's just the two of them right now, and uh, yeah, the druid and the cleric. Uh, the yeah, third hasn't shown people. up yet. Okay, so well, three silver. She she bows and thanks you and lets out a bit of a giggle. Yeah. Uh, one more question about the runes. How many runes can an item hold? Uh, just the one in the concern that a, uh, runes might conflict and activating one could activate the other and cause rather severe backlash for the individual wielding them. So, it will, uh, so if I wanted to add, use a different rune, you would have to remove the first rune? Yes. Good, from, good to know. Well, I hope to see you some other time. It was a pleasure seeing you as well, and I hope to see you again soon. Yeah. I still think this, this uh, town needs a trinket shop. Maybe I should invest in one later. Well, it is a... It is technically on the road between two major cities. Wouldn't be a bad place to put one. Okay. Uh, um, meanwhile, uh, food is starting to be delivered downstairs at the inn and tavern. And, uh, yeah, eggs, um, large slabs of meat for the orcs. Uh, because you look like a, because you look like a, a human, uh, uh, Phage even gets a plate. Nice. And, uh, I would slide it over to my pet and say, eat. <clears throat> Seth's gonna... Continue to stare at him. He, he's, uh, he, he grumbles something in Orcish. Seth gobbles uh, down uh, half of his food, and then before you, like, feed all of your food to the orc, he grabs some of the meat and uh, goes and takes it out to the, to the dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> the dog is very going. happy to have to have food. Ikrika is just cleaning out her third bowl of eggs and meat. Uh, I speak in ancient orcish form. Can I understand what he said? Uh, I'm pretty sure the orc can understand what he said. Uh, ancient orcish, um... You would probably r roughly recognize... I mean, I guess it's orcish, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, you would probably get a rough understanding of him saying, uh, well, essentially he's calling you a demon. That's fair. I'll just respond, yes. Ikrik looks up from over her bowl and responds in orcish, which basically means, <laughs> now your play, sir, place broomstick. <laughs> oh. He grumbles and eats the food that is left on the plate after, uh, after uh, um, Set or Seth takes some of it. <laughs> but you know he still needs food, so he eats it. Uh, I presume you're going back to the inn to eat, um, Adakin, because your food's gonna get cold. Yes. <laughs> It's a very fine meal, and uh, uh, Anna Black Butter wishes you all a fine day, seeming to try and rush you out the door because uh, she must want to get things done and is gotten almost is, has gotten most other people out of the breakfast queue much quicker by the time you guys are done. Uh, but yeah, um, you guys can do as you please at this point. <clears throat> after after Seth feeds the dog some food, he he asks the dog to stay there, so he's not being followed around. Um, he goes and finds a place uh, that's there's no one around. Turns into a cat and and wanders back to the um, the mansion because he's he wants to try he wants to try to see if he can hear. Or see anything. Oh, the mayoral house. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Give me a stealth check. Right. You can take plus two. Uh, do you get a bonus? When you should have a bonus when you're in cat form. I guess it. Yeah. I guess you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I have plus eleven. So. Yeah. So, you um. Don't really raise any suspicions or thoughts. No one chooses to brush you off or chase you off when you're walking through their yards. Uh, and the mayoral house actually has more um, guards from the Neverwinter Guard surrounding it at the time. Okay. Um... Uh, the, there are two standing out front the door, two different ones. <laughs> These seem a lot more professional in what they were doing. And there are actually uh, two standing out the back door as well. The back door being over here. All right. Um. Well. Well. Then he's he's obviously very surprised. Um. Because he didn't know there were more than those two Neverwinter guards in the town, and he he tries to listen to any conversation first from from the guards. Um. Around, because I assume where was the inn? Ah, the inn's okay. here, so, and so he he probably just ended up cutting through. So I assume he would um, end up coming to the back of the house first. So yeah, uh, he would be he he tries to listen to anything that those uh, those guards might be talking about. The guards appear to be. Well on point, uh, as if someone is watching them, almost. They are, they're not talking, they're standing in attention, they're looking out, they're not actually conversing or relaxing at all. They're behaving He's quite a, differently, honestly. He, he, Seth kind of noted, well, does, does... I got it, one second. Think, yeah. What? 
Sorry about that. You're fine. Um, I'm gonna do a perception roll, uh, just to look, since he notices they're kind of standing around, kind of as if someone's watching them. He just kind of looks around to see if there's anyone other than those two guards in the back. Are you still on the ground? Yeah, as a cat. Okay. Because there's no trees around or anything, right? Not really. Okay. Uh, well, with a score <sighs> like that... <laughs> uh, well, you notice that there is someone uh, through the window of the Mayora house, one of the back windows, mm -hmm. you actually see someone you don't recognize wearing very noble robes. Uh, very noble garb, rather. Uh, speaking to the kobolds uh, in the uh, in the front office area. Okay. It, it kind of just uh, goes straight through. The um, there are there any windows or anything open? Uh, no, nothing's open. You can just see him through the window, and he looks quite important. Uh, wearing pure white, uh, his robes are pure white, at least from what you can see. And, uh, there's an insignia, that, though you're too far away to actually make out what the insignia is. Okay, uh, well, in that case, he's just gonna go, um, jump on the windowsill of wherever he can see in the window. And kind of, like, see if he can see what the insignia of the, uh, this important-looking individual looks like. When you jump up into the window, one of the guards turns and starts shooing you off the window ledge. Uh, he ignores the guard and keeps peering into the window to see if he can see um, anything. Like, basically, he wants to see that insignia if he can. Just a second, let me get that for you. Uh, you would generally recognize this, uh, as the, um, uh, oh god, what were they? Uh, one of the holy groups in Neverwinter. I'm trying to get their name right now for you, I apologize. Okay. It's not the, uh, it's not the three snowflake circles of the, um, city of Neverwinter, it's rather the, uh, two swords crossed over, I can't find a good picture of it, the two swords crossed over a snowflake, uh, for, um, the Agalandar family, the okay. adventurers and worshippers of Tyr. Does, um, and I can roll for this if you like, but would Seth recognize... The, the logo? Um... Do you have knowledge religion? Is uh, that a thing in this? I keep forgetting. Yes. I... Uh, knowledge religion is a thing. Yeah, I don't. Uh, well, then... I've got, probably... I've, got no, I've, I've got knowledge local, though. Oh, knowledge local will do it. Give me a knowledge local roll. Okay. 20? Yes, you do recognize this. The uh, two cross swords represent Tyr, the snowflake represents uh, Neverwinter, and this is essentially a, 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 a militaristic holy order. Okay. <laughs> they, are, they are descendants of Lord Nasher Al um, Alagandar, who, with his adventuring party, who all worshipped Tyr, basically Well, they created quite the stir in um, uh, Neverwinter and basically placed their own ruler on the throne not 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, so uh, they're, the, uh, they're the religious party behind the political party in charge in Neverwinter. And what was the name of it again? Uh, the uh, Knights of Al um, Alagandar. Alagandar. Uh, Alagandar. I don't know how to pronounce it. These... I'm not the reason why we never go to Neverwinter. Yeah. yeah. 
yes. but yes, um, but it's clear that intrigue. he's he is trying. He's you can't really hear what he's saying, but you can see that he's rather upset with the little kobold, and is trying to convince the kobold of something. The guard is still trying to push you off the windowsill and get you to move on. He, uh, he hisses at the guard and jumps down and moves toward the window that he was at last night. So the, 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 the back wall over here. Yeah, the, wherever the, the, um, the... The mayor's, uh, mayor's. resting room in the back, yeah. Uh, well, the mayor is laying down. He's not really asleep, although he certainly looks like he wants to be. He's still recovering. He still looks quite exhausted. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to determine because he's alone in the room right now. Right. It, it, okay. It's hard to tell if he's talked to this individual or not, or if he's just been laying there the whole time. Right, right. Um... Okay, well, uh, I just want to go around to see if the guards in the front are saying anything, and if not, I will, um, being yep. that there's tons of, tons of guards around, um, I'm going to not press my luck in trying to gain entry into the mayor's office via window. Um, so yeah, he, he, Seth wanders around to the front to see if the guards in the front are saying anything. No, nope, these are different guards as well, and they are standing in at attention, clearly doing their job instead of slacking off. Right, right. Um, Seth will head back to the inn. Alright. Uh, is anyone else going to be doing anything in town? Uh, I'd like to make a roll for last night. Oh, yeah. What's that? Uh, jeweler. Since I did have all night. You have some very fine polished stones. Outstanding. I can trade them for real gems to cut later. Yes. All right, so um, if nothing else, Anna Blackbutter really, really wants to get you guys out the door. <laughs> well, I asked Ingrid, how was the food? Very good, and I'm still eating more, and I'm not going anywhere until I get more sausages. <laughs> I toss a gold uh, to the tavern keeper. She still looks a bit exasperated and goes into the back to try and get more food. <laughs> Actually, uh, I, I'd like to take and drop off my cream. Innkeeper, and if you give me a whole chain of sausages, I'll just leave. <laughs> she responds with, you better. <laughs> uh, it was the keeper that was renting wagons. Yes. I'm going to see her again and ask her if you can rent the wagon from her. Okay, she comes back out. She delivers a plate of linked sausages. A large plate of linked sausages. <laughs> and then turns around and uh, at your question and says, Oh, yes, we have a few carriages. Uh, someone else will have to drive them unless you're taking them round trip. But uh, you can rent them starting at, what's this starting? I guess 10 gold? Yeah. I look over to Tegbin and say, should we rent the wagon since we have, uh, don't have as much time as I hoped for? I say we should. That way I'll get, get to eat this chain as trip snacks instead. Pull out my book, look over our finances. Yes. Okay, we are renting the wagon. And if you find someone who is willing to do the round trip, that would be great. <laughs> oh, I have a, um, a water, water wagon driver's called. I think I may have someone. I'm heading upstairs to that guy's room. She says, oh no, I need, I need it to be one of my drivers so that the cart comes back. Preferably in one piece. <clears throat> he 
He's bound right. to be sober by now, though. <laughs> right? <coughs> but he, but he's I mean, not I'm the, okay. He's not the carriage hand. The carriage hand is likely uh, someone who actually tends to the animals. Uh, but yes, uh, she says ten gold, uh, or actually, how far do you need to go, is the question she what asks you. And she says, well, yeah, I can get you there for ten gold. Okay. I hand over the ten gold. Alright, she, uh, puts that in her bag, and then, uh, beckons for you specifically, Saul, to come with her as she goes into the back, to the, to the barns in the back. Yeah. And uh, while there, she introduces you to the uh, to the carriage hand. Uh, let's call him Phil because I didn't really plan him out in detail, mm -hmm. and it's not entirely necessary to. And uh, Phil is a skilled carriage hand. He loves the horses with all his life, and he'll be the one. Dr uh, he'll be the one driving us. Uh, just come to him. If you come to him when you're ready, he'll have the cart hooked up for you, and he'll take you out into town. Uh, he'll take you out uh, of town. A question I say to her. Yes. Is Phil's na last name Di Franco? <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> Philly. <Philippe. laughs> uh, hold on. It's uh, it is <laughs> McGraw. Oh. As any in, relation? Any relation to Tim? Uh, no, closer related to uh, closer related to his twin brother, the uh, the traveling psychiatrist uh, who who says leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> Phil McGraw is Doctor Phil. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, <laughs> anyway, it would have been funnier if he had another brother named Tim who was a bard. Saiyan. It would have been great, yes, but I, th the one I was going for, I, I don't know, I was, the first Phil that came to mind was Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, uh, so when you guys are ready, you uh, just come find him, and he will have you guys set up and take you out of town. Um, I keep forgetting her names because because I never wrote it down. What was the four-armed lady's name again? Idra. I-D-R-A-A. Okay. Uh, have we seen her since last night? Because she said she was going to be bunking at the inn. Uh, she came in much later than you guys were around, but she is actually going to... Uh, she actually came down right towards the end of breakfast when the... Uh, uh, when the sausages, after the sausages got delivered, so she's just coming down the stairs now. And if you cross all the way, the lady taken a, one of the cloths from the table and wrap, wrap the sausages inside them as provisions for herself. <laughs> <laughs> the sausages are gone, all of them. Okay. Yeah, there, there, are, there are some, there are some players who have very good senses of smell. <laughs> they have players and their pets. Uh-huh. <clears throat> well, if, uh, can, if, uh, if the, my ball is ready, then I'm going to take the team and try and get them on the wagon so we can get to Waterdeep. Okay. Uh, before um, that, I'd oh, like yeah. to trade in my polished rocks for uh, unpolished local rocks. Uh, certainly. The jeweler actually has a number of unpolished rocks now. Uh, did I tell you what kind of unpolished rocks those were? You did not. Forgive me. I just marked them down as, uh, massive unpolished rocks. Uh, do you remember how many there were? Uh, yes, I had a dozen left. Okay, um, let me look up something right quick. Could you roll me... Yeah, roll, uh, I'm just gonna do this by twos. Roll me 60-20. 
You sure okay. those rocks you polish were better than the rock candy? What? You sure those rocks you polish were rock candy? I'm pretty sure. You can try to eat one of them if you'd rather. <laughs> I'll, I'll that His name is not X, so... Uh, 14. You did say 5d6, right? Uh, 66. Oh. Basically, each of those individual numbers is going to give me... Alright. Uh... Crap. Um... One moss agate. One... Uh, one moss agate. One bloodstone. One tooth... Oh, excuse me. One, um... Deep blue spinal, and one blue sapphire. Holy shit, you're rich. <clears throat> Ex two of each, excuse me. Double double everything I said. Okay, so two moss agates. Two bloodstones. And what was the rest of it? I sapphire like it. and blue uh, spinal. Two, bla uh, two sapphires and four deep blue spinals. Got it. Okay then, I'll be trading in the bloodstones and the moss agates. Alright, those are worth... Uh, da, 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 50 GP for the bloodstones and 10 GP for the agates, and he will do uh, 2 to 1 for unpolished, uh, for unpolished stone. Uh, so you can pick uh, up to 120 gold worth of uh, agate, azurite, uh, quartz, hematite, lapis lazuli, malachite, obsidian, tiger's eye, uh, freshwater pearls, bloodstones, carnelians, chalcedony. Here, let me give you the list. It's on the. It's under the table, uh, about two thirds the way down the page. <clears throat> Sorry. But yeah, um, table one and table two, or uh, rows one and two of table gems, if you got them. Okay. Pull that up. <clears throat> and yes, I'm using a different, uh, manner of measuring than their deep percent, because... Meh. <laughs> I am looking for the table. Uh, you gotta scroll down a bit to get to it. It's below all. It's below the whole. Um, all the ta uh, tre uh, all the. Uh, uh, it's below table treasure and uh, magic items. Uh. I didn't see a link for it anywhere. Oh, I dropped it in random, not Waterdeep, that's why. Ah, that's why. There we All go. Alright. Sorry. Okay. Probably going to go with the freshwater pearls, honestly. What? I can use those for identify. What were the uh the names of the mayor and the his cobod? Uh the mayor's name was Mendevier. M A E N D Y V V E R, uh, and you never actually caught his kobold's name. Oh, okay. So I'm getting these half off since they're rough. Yeah. So you're essentially getting um, one twenty twenty four irreg uh, freshwater irregular pearls. <coughs> Uh, or probably you can worth get that many the spinels too. Then, well, you see, those spinels are quite valuable. Those deep blue spinels are worth five hundred gold apiece. Well, then I'll walk out with a bag of freshwater pearls for trading in one of them. Impressive. All right. Uh, so, six hundred and six hundred and twenty worth. Okay, so you've got 124 freshwater pearls. 
That works for me. That'll give me something to polish while everyone else sleeps for a while. <laughs> what a fascinating uh, way to hand waste your time. To polish something. But um. All right. So um, yeah. Well, you you have walked away with quite a lot of wealth, honestly, from that from that deal. <laughs> Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Meanwhile, um, the carriage hand is getting the horses hooked up to the wagon, or rather the carriage. Um, it's actually an enclosed carriage. It's not an open-backed wagon. And oh, he's d doing that right in front of the... He's doing that right in front of the inn. Um, the dog is... Sticking close, trying to stick ca stick close to, uh, trying to stick close to Seth whenever possible. Uh, and, uh, the, um, what was the name? Uh, tr something like Tealtree. Tealtree yeah. is, of course, standing back complaining, but no longer trying to escape. <laughs> well, of course not. We feed him, and he's afraid mm -hmm. of us. Mm hmm. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are ready to take your trip down the road, go ahead and let mm. me know, otherwise. Yeah. Um, well, if uh, my bowl is ready, then I'm ready to go. Oh, yes, and your bowl, your bowl is ready. Uh, Seth uh, looks around to see if he can see Idra, and just he lets lets her know that they're, leave, they're leaving and they're heading back to, um, to uh, Waterstein. Uh, Idra was downstairs inside the inn, uh, being just as much of a nuisance as um, Iklik was being. <laughs> demanding her food and demanding as much of it as possible. And she asks you all to wait up for her. Uh, she would gladly pay for a trip down the road. She needs to be heading back based on things she's found out and would not mind the company on the travel back. Okay. I'm sure she has some big uh, area of attack uh, spell ready because we need to get rid of that final group. My only concern is it's a closed carriage, uh, so Seth, uh, Seth's gonna sit, what is it called, post on the carriage, like in the back, and rather uh, than inside? Well, presumably you would be... I'm pretty sure that that giant bag of pearls <laughs> is going to either going to be in the um, in the post spot on the back because it's normally used for storage in addition to uh, guards standing out. Mm -hmm. uh, or it can be kept on top. Essentially, you've got two options. Well, if, uh, if Seth's <clears throat> not inside the carriage, then the pearls could take his spot. I was thinking it'd make good bait, then we can just snipe them as they try to rush us to get the pearls. <laughs> well, that really helps. I'm just uh, hoping that we can just attract them and just go heavy on them so we can get on with it. I was also curious about if I cast in Vyrsa Vanish or Ikex Club or whatever weapon that she plans to use. What was that? that I didn't catch the used... beginning of that. If I use Vanish on Iklix weapon, so they couldn't see what she was wielding, would she be able to surprise someone? Um... Well, Vanish isn't invisibility, is it? It yes. functions like invisibility, only it lasts for one round per cast to level max 5. Uh... I mean, they would still know that an orc is attacking them, so it wouldn't be the most effective thing to Vanish. Might be a better idea to vanish the entire orc. <laughs> <laughs> what if I just vanish uh, Iklik's head? Uh, that's kind of that, that that just increases the terror of the of the orc attacking them. The headless the, the headless orcman. Wait. <laughs> be hilarious. Uh, I mean, that's that's y'all's call. We but... aim to cause as much emotional damage as possible. Clearly. 
can I wear it it's as my a skin? Mind broken or. <laughs> But, uh, yes, the, um, dog hops into the cart, and I presume a lot of you do as well? Yes. I'm yes. going to uh, let Ikrik know <laughs> that uh, if we get attacked, let me touch her weapon before she starts attacking, so I can enchant it. I'm casting Prestidigitation on her pet, the dog, because it smells worse than my pet orc. He starts petting petting the the dog because it's a cute doggy and gives him a sausage. Oh, this dog I, I loves you. Them. Does Tigman have any electricity based spells? Mm, the majority of my attack spells are force based. Because hmm. if you mm, have the electricity, then we... If you had electricity, then we could combine it with my create water. <sighs> Sounds like a spell for another time. The carriage pulls out and begins trotting along, and you all travel back to... Where's my marker? There it is. The long road. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask uh, Tagbin's opinion. Should we be loud or should we be quiet? Well, they're going to hear they're... something clopping down the uh, down the road, and, and quite sure that they'll ambush <clears throat> it because because carriage means money. Yeah. Usually, yes. Okay, and then we just need to prepare our counter ambush. Just be ready. Um. That'll do well enough. Grow you back out. Negation, what did that do again? It's for spells. I'm putting you all on the kite. <laughs> Yay! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we are finally on the wagon. Well, don't fall off the wagon, you drunkard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very full ride. You guys are sitting pretty close together. Uh, presumably the only one of you who is not taking up any space is the cat, who is basically resting on the outside. Uh, as you all move along... They're dead. Hold on. I guess I need to tick through slowly so that y'all get vision. And I cannot remember where I put those units. Where did Negation, I put those units? What did that do again? Oh, right. There they are. No, wait. Are those... Yes, those still have life. No, those <clears> are dead. Those are dead. Where's the other group? Where did I put them? Maybe they're no, just no, soul they're... bodies on the way. On the way. <laughs> yeah, those are dead. We can okay. know. Did... Well, congratulations. You guys have actually cleared them out because I ran out of um, living orcs to attack you with. <laughs> Apparently there was one less group than you guys expected. And I don't know if you guys can actually see where I'm dragging you. Mm. But I I'm basically just scrolling down the map and taking you. Now this trip takes much shorter on uh, by carriage, so it's it's a pretty quick trip at like three hours. You know. Quick. <laughs> Especially since it's the road and not us as skulking about in the forest. Yeah. And I need to make a character sheet and a token for the dog. As you're going down through the forest, you, you cross past, past the, uh, the dead bodies, and the horses kind of act up uh, when they see some corpses, but the handler is pretty good at his job and keeps them, uh, keeps them moving, moves around them as much as he can, and... I just realized I could go square fishing with those corpses if I wanted to. <coughs> you guys are disturbed. You guys are absolutely disturbed. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could activate my Shakespeare, cause you're turning on it, and hit the corpse. 
Or you want to practice your aim because your dexterity is not that good. <laughs> These guys are n not selectable, apparently. Let me guess. Oh, yep, they are in the background because I'm an idiot. Um, just move you guys away so that you're not technically on the map anymore. Those, I was the uh, the encampment of the adventurers who you met. A couple sessions back, sitting outside the walls. Yeah, a wave to them. Oh no, they're not there anymore. I've, that's why I was moving them. We still have to give them back their weapons, since no one let me take them and give them back. Yes, you do. Yeah. And uh, he arrives at the gates and says, "This is as far as I go." The uh, carriageman that is. Tip him a silver. He thanks you and uh, stands by the horses, petting and calming them while you guys are unloading and getting ready to go into town. I'm uh, tying guys... a rope around my orc's neck. <laughs> a nice hemp one. Uh, I'm sure he appreciates the scratchiness. You can have a leather collar later if you're good. <laughs> he cakes snake eyes and keeps feeding the dog sausage. <laughs> Good doggy. <laughs> Come on, well, Seth, Seth, Seth wanders, uh, wanders up and snags one of those sausages. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there we go. I'm going, going to ask uh, Seth something. But Seth doesn't need to be a human for me to explain it. Nope. No. Um, I realize that you're going to need a lot more gold pretty soon, so... You know the gambling place close to where my office is? He just kind of nods. Can you go there later and find out uh, where they keep account of who's owing them money and where the gold is? But don't steal either of them. That would be bad. Uh, you just need to find out where it is for later. He looks around. Is there anyone like other than the, his the, our group around? Like like immediately in the vicinity uh there are travelers coming up and walking up and down the uh exit of the downs mm -hmm. he he just kind of says um <laughs> without like drawing attention to himself not even looking at saul um so that way it doesn't look like there's a cat talking um he says that shouldn't be a problem he says, but uh, what do I get out of it? <laughs> Tuna. <laughs> he, he smacks his lips a little bit. <laughs> Tuna. <laughs> I didn't get what you were saying, Adua. Uh, he, he says it shouldn't be a problem to do what you asked, and then he says, what does he get out of it? <laughs> Tuna. <laughs> Tuna and you'll get uh, get a lot of gold later. Um, cooking's something of a plan for, for us to take over that place. Yeah, um, he 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 just he kind of nods and uh, <coughs> with with he gives off this air of like we'll discuss it more once we're in private. Yeah, I just nod to it, and so to take that, I'm going back to my office and wait for a client. Uh, see you later. Uh, Seth um, trots after Saul because he definitely wants to be around when this... What did... What was this demon <clears throat> woman? What is that what mom called her? Yeah. Demon uh, woman? Yes. Uh... Not quite your kind devil, of person. It might have been Devil Woman. Uh, where is her character sheet? Ike goes towards the office too and just uh, call, calls the doggy. Come on, doggy. It's time for you to see your new home. I am missing some character mm -hmm. sheets. That's frustrating. I don't know why I'm missing character sheets. Yeah, there should be like an entire page worth of character sheets under the uh, under the journal for me, and most of them aren't there. That's irritating. 
But at least I made you your dog. <laughs> oh wait, no wait. I'm an idiot. I had NPCs. Um, I had NPCs uh, closed, Collapse. and I looked. Yeah, collapsed, and I wasn't really looking at it right. Just a second. I'm making your um, character sheet for your dog. Okay. Thirteen, fourteen, twelve, three, twelve, and seven. Uh. Um. Three. Um. Da 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 da. And smell. Anyway, just finishing that up. Um, parse. Uh, and that should be in there for you. Properly. I'm sorry? The map hasn't rested properly. Uh, it should have switched you over to the, um... It the took a while. It should the be... Lower it... Half of it. The lower half? Yes. I mean, the map cuts off, because this is the uh, divided up version of the map that I use oh, and okay. so you sh you should o you guys are in the very north eastern corner of this map uh just south of the upper downs at the entrance to the long it's just, i think i've actually got you guys entering at the wrong point but whatever just a second let me look at the north ward no no it's the high it's the high road entrance that connects those two roads all right all right, so yes, you guys enter where you left the city, all the way over here, if you can see that. And yeah, you guys are free to do what you want in town. Uh, the, the guards are, of course, keeping careful eye on you, because they're keeping careful eye for everyone. Um, well, I'm going back to the office, and I'm going to so start uh, writing up the... Uh... My proposal is for cat insurance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Not cat insurance, but cat uh, herd, horde, pride. Yeah. Cat pride insurance. <laughs> or in case a bunch of cats uh, sneak in and destroy your stuff. Those wily cats. Yeah. I'm going back and I want to show the doggy the new home. Alright, um, so we are at the corner of Waterdeep Way and, what is it, Snail Street. And, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, are we going, so we're going in your office and you're doing something with the inn next door, so I might as well actually load up this scene. So which one's the gambling house? The gambling house is the one with all the tables that Tegwin is in. Uh, oh, current, okay. uh, well, Tegwin's token is in, I should say. Now, when you get back home, a familiar face is actually waiting outside. If I can get it to show up, please. There we go, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I tipped my fedora hat to pull her. She, uh, so this, you're in the inn right now, Seth, um, I'm gonna move Tegwin in here as well, because I presume you went with the rest of them back home? Yes. Alright, so... The mo all I have to say is the moment they, they en enter, Ikrik turns to Tegwin, just put that broom next to the normal one in the corner. <laughs> she looks <laughs> at the slave. <laughs> Um, Come feel free. Let me show you your closet. <laughs> she follows you all in inside and waits patiently at the counter. Yeah, I'll take a seat at the counter. A uh, put looks my hat uh, down. So, what can I do for you today? I think the question is, what have you done for me? The message should be delivered, and the forest is safe. That's good to hear. Is he going to be making his trip out to meet me? Likely. Well, I certainly hope so, for y'all's sake. 
Being that you did what I asked, I must keep up my side of the bargain. She pulls out a bag and sets a bag of coin on the counter, uh, amounting to 140 gold. Yeah, I hand that over to Teg then to sort out, because that is not my gold, that is the officer's gold. I will grab the appropriate book and start making notes. Now I have another task for you if you're up for it. I'm sure, you're, you're paying me so I am still your lawyer. There's an individual who's been arrested and I need to see to their escape by any means necessary. I would prefer it, I would prefer if you did it in a legal fashion, but if he must be freed by force, I see no problem with doing so. Understandable, understandable. Uh, what is he accused of? Treason. Hmm. Interesting. E that's gonna Sorry, be that's wrong. Uh, could I have a note? that I could use the right things, because this is uh, it will be a bit too messy for me to keep notes of this on my character sheet. Oh, yeah, let me create um, a add handouts. Um, I rolled a is, sense motive check on her. Uh, this is, sorry, I'm just trying to think of Saul's Airplane. notepad. All put in everyone's journals can be edited by Otakeen. Safe changes. There you go. You now have Saul's notepad. Um, so you're doing a sense motive, and you... Yes. And you hit it. Interesting. Okay, um, let me grab her character sheet. Uh, it, she clearly wants to... She wants this person free. She's not... She's not joking. But it, it seems that she expects you will have to resort to something far less than savory. She's not lying about the treason, she's not lying about uh, uh, the person being under arrest, but it's very clear uh, that she doesn't expect you'll no. be able to deal with this like a lawyer. It um, speaks up, so why is he accused of treason? Oh, he's not just... accused of treason, he's being held for reasons that are well beyond me, but none of my previous attempts have been able to liberate him. Well, you did not a... answer my question. I don't know why he's being held. However, the man has commit treason, and I need to be sure that he deals with the consequences. What's the pay? When she says that he deals with the consequences, does uh, Seth get the sense that that th this man has crossed her and she wants to punish him herself? No. Okay. Okay, let's start with the basics before but, we get confused there. What's the name of this guy? Uh, you will find him under the name of... Uh, I'm sorry, let me... I'm sorry, I'm keeping all sorts... I gotta get this shit organized again. I quickly grow disorganized with this kind of stuff. Uh, but I know where I can find his name again. It was... No. No. Where is the... That wasn't it. It's... Where? I apologize that this is... Taking me so long to search this stuff up. <laughs> um, blah 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 blah. I, uh, uh, he is going by the name Pierre right now. At least that's what he's registered under at the at the guards' jailhouse in the North Ward. Any last name? Uh, he apparently did not give a last name. Okay, so you don't know, you don't know the details of the case, I think. 
I don't know how he ended up imprisoned in the first place, but he's there, and while he's there, he is out of my reach, to say the least. Fair enough. Hmm. I will look into the case. Uh, do, you, are you, do you have any... I'm likely going to need some friends <laughs> if I'm going to get this done properly. Well, then I will have to leave you with some gold to pay for assistance. Will that do? That will do, because we're not talking about uh, petty theft or insult or something like that. This is, this is why she speaks over her partner. We will simply accept payment for proper investigation and relying on the information of what has happened. We will leave it upon us ourselves to decide whether we venture further into the mission after proper reconnaissance. Um, but by the way, earlier, when, when we completed our thing, and she asked if if the mayor was going to come visit her and she said well he'd better for our sake i also I was like yeah I, I was i was uh i was also trying to get a a sense motive on that statement as well it's clear that she doesn't work alone but there's not much you can determine from it like like was it a threat no no okay uh, if anything, she might have been speaking about others that work with her, and she might have been speaking <coughs> about uh, uh, the incorporation which you all are working together on. Uh, oh, so how much gold is she giving us for this case? Uh, I will give you 100 gold to do the reconnaissance, but please, come find me at the... Just a second while I look at the map. <sighs> Stupid fucking browser. Um, come find me at the corner of the Street of Silks outside of Pierre Garon's palace uh, when you are done. Uh, there's one large house on the corner of Waterdeep Way and uh, the Street of Silks where Pierre Garon's palace is. So you got a house over there? <clears throat> it's a decent place. Are you interested in buying some cat insurance? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what you would need insurance from cats for, but I will have to turn that down for now. Suffice it to say that knowing that getting this reconnaissance alone will be of great assistance. However, if you are able to liberate him, you would be doing me even, an even better service, and I will be able to pay you greater upon your return. Uh, fair enough. Uh, let's see what we can do about this case. To figure out exactly what the details are. Uh, she takes a moment and stares at the cats before walking out the door. She doesn't really say anything, but she's curious. And she <clears> leaves <throat> just about as quickly as she came. Rap. What? I didn't say- I was taking notes and, and then I pressed X and didn't say them. <laughs> Damn Oof. it. <sighs> well, I'm looking over the group some more. Seth, uh, Seth just walks out the door. You're following behind her? Yes. Okay, well... I'm going to look over to Tegben and Iklik and say, we have two projects going on here, it seems. Well, three. Four. I'm also teaching TL3 how to keep the books. <laughs> oh. oh, that's gonna be, uh, that's oh, gonna be a lot of failed you know, intelligence um, checks. Uh, before Speaking we of. before we move forward, uh, a cart pulls up in front of the uh, in front of the office when she walks out the door, 
and she looks behind herself, staring at Seth in the eyes again, this time, before stepping into the cart and leaving. <clears throat> Seth was just Seth was just uh, sitting on the when he he walked out the door, and he was licking himself. So mm -hmm. he well, okay, he wasn't even. Then she didn't look you in the eyes then, but she looks straight mm -hmm. at you again. Uh, he as as she gets uh, into the cart, he looks up at the cart. Uh, is the cart descript in any way? No, it just looks like a normal covered wagon. A covered wagon, so it's not even a carriage. It's not a fine carriage, no. So, like, is it like more like a hack or just a covered wagon? Uh, a bit like a hack, yes. Okay. There's it's there's nothing special about it. It's just a a common transport wagon. All right. Um. He uh, jumps on to the roof of the office and starts following the car the best he can from the rooftops. All right. Um, the cart, let me switch over to a slightly bigger map so we can see what we're doing here. Um, where are we here? Okay, so the cart travels from Saul's office. Let me know when that's refreshed for you. It is. All right, where is my ruler tool? Travels from Saul's office up to Waterdeep Way, and then instead of going the way you would expect to Piergaron's, pal uh, Piergaron's palace, it continues north on uh, onto the long road, or rather the high road. Oh, so it actually leaves town? No, or... it's just it's just oh. going it's just going north. You would have to cross. You would have to cross Waterdeep Way and get back onto the roofs. Um, then he th does. It seem like there's a lot of traffic. Like he might lose sight of the. No, this cart is most of the traffic is foot traffic. Okay. Well, then he 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 climbs down and then climb then crosses the road and climbs back up. All right. Let me switch us over to another map to follow her. I'm right. going to go ahead and I should have already done it, but I'm going to roll stealth check. You're so doing Assassin's Creed now. <laughs> Cat style. <laughs> I'm doing Cat Assassin's that. Creed. Yes. <laughs> I was kind of reminded of the first episode of the Tick animated series. <laughs> you know, they're all heading towards the dam. They reach the last building in the city before the dam and all the superheroes are lined up. What happened? Okay. Wrong man. Oh, ran out of buildings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's Sorry. See. This was the map that I wanted. Ah, uh, okay. So, and 26 so, still? Well, you are invisible. She is <laughs> traveling north on this road until she gets to Tarnath Street. And then the cart turns on Tarnath Street down to Suldown and then travels basically around this turn to and it and stops at Mert the Money Lend at Mert the Money Lenders um, rather fine house. And right. she then travels inside. The cart remains there for quite some time, honestly. So if you want to wait for her, you can wait for her, but you might be waiting for a few hours. Um, he's going to, um, he, he's, he's, he's going to try to get, uh, around Mertz, um, to see if he can see in a window without being, or if there are any windows open without being noticed. Alright, give me, uh, another stealth check. Twenty-seven. Uh, Mert's office is quite the fortress unto itself. Uh, however, you are able to find a an open window into the shop, uh, and uh, this is where she entered. 
Uh, however, odds are they won't be speaking about anything of matter in public in the shop right. itself. The shop is the southern half of the house. The house itself is the northern chunk here. And uh, so in the shop, uh, Mert greets her. Now, for those who don't know, Mert the moneylender is quite the character. Let me bring up a good description of him. Mert is a fat, wheezing old rogue and retired adventurer. He made his fortune as an adventurer in Undermountain after a colorful career as a mercenary general. He used to be known as Mert the Merciless, the Old Wolf, or the Lord Walrus. And he has made many enemies across the uh, Gold Coast, but more so people who owe him money. Uh, he is. Uh, an accident. At this point in time, he is still quite young compared to where he would be in 5th edition post-Spell Plague. Uh, he's got uh, he's got a very strong business, but he's not. Uh, he hasn't, you know, pissed off so many people yet that he has been. He has had people of magic trying to imprison him inside small pieces of metal yet. Uh, that said, uh, Mert is a loud and tipsy braggart, but this is mostly a, a mask. So he pretends to be drunk, he pretends to be off balance, and he's very boastful and insulting in his manner, uh, even with people he likes. However, you can see that when um, Ciara enters the shop, she's not someone that he likes. He goes from being very jovial with a customer to immediately very solemn, staring at her and saying, I'll be with you in just a moment. He then returns to his customer, finishes making an exchange, and the customer leaves. Uh, so, so I so I picked up from the body language that he didn't he doesn't seem to like her. No, he or... does not like her. All right. I, um, can I roll a sense motive on the general just? Just kind of just between them, like any other additional body language, a natural 20. These two people know each other very well. Uh, they have clearly worked together, and uh, despite Mert's attitude, it's clear that he's not in a position where he can get out of this, uh, out of the ar any arrangement which they have. What that arrangement might be, you wouldn't know. She, on the other hand, based on her body language and her face, clearly appears to have the upper hand in some way over him. And, uh, again, without words, you wouldn't be able to tell exactly what, but her confidence speaks volumes in this situation. Her confidence and his responding to her entering. Okay. I, um... I wait until they go off wherever they're going off to. Is it a, an office, or did you say they're going into the house? Well, for the time being, he's, he's just going to address her gruffly and directly while going over to the front door and flipping his sign to close. Okay. Uh, he doesn't really pay attention to the open window. He doesn't really care. But he looks at her and says, Is everything in order? And she responds, yes, of course. How about on your end? And he pauses. There has been trouble obtaining the vast amount of wealth you've asked for. Even I can't work pure miracles. It's not like the necromancer still rules over the Undermountain and provides us with endless wealth in the form of adventuring these days. She rolls her eyes and takes a look around. Uh, your stealth is so high. She doesn't really pay attention to you when she looks up to the window, but she does ask that the window be closed. Mert, <laughs> and Mert does, uh, Mert does, uh, oblige. Uh, before the window is closed, he, uh, she says, um, I don't have much time to sit down for a full meeting. However, this needs to be done. 
This needs to be done now, otherwise the entirety of the Hidden Lords is going to have a much bigger problem on their hands. Okay. And at that <clears throat> point, Mert closes the window, and it becomes that much harder to hear. Um... Well, uh, Seth goes and gets on the roof of Mertz and watches the cart and waits. He's just going to... Actually, you know what? Um, he's going to go over and, and investigate the cart. Okay, give me a perception. <laughs> Nine. There is nothing interesting about this cart uh, that you can catch off off uh, at glance. It looks like any cart that a noble would use to travel around town if they didn't want to draw too much attention to themselves. Okay. Then, uh, then in that case, he's going to uh, make his distance from the cart and just wait until she comes back out. All right, it's going to be a little bit of time. Um, they're still talking. And in the meanwhile, we are going to hop back to... Uh, that's not what I wanted. Bad. We're going to hop back to the castle, the castle in Dock Wards. Because, oh, no, wait, that's not what I wanted. Come on. Okay, stop locking up on me. Uh, app, roll 20, please. I beg of you. Okay, uh, I gotta fix my tab. Sorry. <sighs> Go away. Hurry up. I mean, I'm not having connection not problems. Anymore. Sorry? I'm just glad I don't set tab X anymore. <laughs> Alright, let us switch us over to the actual map we're on. Snail and water deep, thank you. Alright, so zooming out again. That is way too far to zoom out. Uh alright. So in the meanwhile, Seth, you are elsewhere. <laughs> I've just moved you away for now. That's, uh, that's fine. Meanwhile, uh you guys uh have 240 gold sitting on your table, and, uh, a task at hand. Uh, she, she left you with additional information, I forgot to mention, I apologize, that it is the, it is the jailhouse in the North Ward where this Pierre is being held. Uh, he is, uh, he looks like a pauper, but you don't want to be Fooled by this, the individual actually holds much more power than he lets off. Uh, and the guards are going to be aware that, uh, I mean, other people have tried to, uh, you know, get him out by legal means before, so it's not like it's going to be the easiest task to negotiate your way into seeing him, let alone freeing him. True. But I wanted to talk with my team before I start on Pierre. But it's on the tape and he click left, so... <laughs> you gotta act fast when trailing somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, before we get started too much, mm -hmm. I'm going to get out one of my tubs of paint, bring Tealtree over, glare at him menacingly, Cast Prestidigitation, form the paint into a little statuette of him, cast Wizard's Mark, and make a mark on him. And I will explain to him that I am binding his soul to my little paint doll. It will allow me to find him no matter where he's at. Um, Whether that's true or not. <laughs> it's not, but the Prestidigitations for making... He totally believes you. Effects. He's so terrified. Holy shit. 
<laughs> you are mine, Tial Tree. You will so serve terrified. me until your body falls to dust. Do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. Understood, understood. <laughs> poor, Good. poor guy. I'll take the fragile little paint statue and set it in my bag. <laughs> well, you now Now have... sweep up, please. <laughs> he, he grabs the broom and begins qu cleaning as quickly as possible. Well, we have a couple of projects uh, going, <laughs> other than TL3. <clears throat> um, I take one of my insurance for cat pride uh, and show it to Tegvan. What do you think? What was the... Uh... Insurance for cats. And sh he said insurance for cat pride, but yeah. I think he That's means cat swarms. <laughs> yeah. I don't want a dog that's chained up. Sorry. I suppose I'll check it over for mistakes, spelling errors and the like. Loopholes. Yeah, it's just uh, my idea that I figured since we have a cat friend, do you think we can convince those uh, warehouses to actually buy this? It might work better as a general pest provision. Hmm. How do we make sure that we don't have to pay too much? I make a pest repellent. Work. Okay, the dog is not a spectral dog, but that's the only icon, that's the best icon, the best dog icon I could find on short notice. Okay. Okay, okay. um, I want you to make a copies of this once you have fixed it as best as you can for that provision. Um, take a stroll on the warehouse stocks in Icric and see if you can sell this. I don't expect anyone to buy any, but uh, we need to at least make them aware of it. Fine. I will, I will go and see if I can meet out. this Pierre and Come on, doggy. Place. Let's see if we can have s someone insure them from cats. <laughs> okay, so what is what are you doing with cat insurance now? <coughs> Peddling it. Yeah, they're I trying mean, to. They're trying to peddle pest insurance. Where? In the warehouse uh, warehouse district. Uh, is there a warehouse district? <laughs> if not, probably the docks. Yeah, the docks would be the only the closest place that has warehousing of any variety. Um, yeah, locations on the larger the larger buildings on Dock Streets are going to be our uh, warehousing facilities, so down straight south of you and then west, so here and here and here. So where do you want to start? Closest, probably closest state. Okay, the closest one is right here. So Take in the... Them, are you here? Also, I love that Teguin's tomb is just sitting out here. <laughs> Phage, did we lose you? No, oh, he's here. No, I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> and my tomb needs to be there. Yes. I don't get guests. It's adorable. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, um, the first place, uh, yeah, well, what's your pitch first? Buy or else. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're trying to smash. You're, you're trying to sell pest insurance in a dock district. Uh, I don't think we're actually supposed to sell any. It's okay. more it's more of a tactic of getting the word around. Also it's a it's a big stone orc with a big dog. 
And okay. I can go. Well. So I just say she's walking around and handing out the notes about it. We're essentially distributing flyers. We're yeah. door hanging. <laughs> We're the <laughs> single most irritating thing that could ever be. We're bill posting. All right. Um, what am I doing with my life? Clearly, <laughs> you are um, doing something or right. Unlife. What am I doing with my unlife? Uh, can okay, so Iklik, can you give me an intimidation check and uh, Adakin, can you give me a diplomacy check? Well, I'm not doing this, but okay. well, I well, which among you wrote the bills? Well, I, I asked Tegwin to do that because he's the scribe. I okay, just then also. Tegwin, give me a scribe check. All right, 15. and um, Red, can you give me an yes? <laughs> well, you certainly made a point. <laughs> While in the first place, in the first place, you don't make any friends. They're certainly terrified to stop you from hanging up a flyer notifying people of pest control, specifically cat control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, insurance. Yes, insurance. <clears throat> um, and all, uh, this, is legal. this is the this is the same response you're you're going to be getting all through um, all across Dock Streets. These people are heavily intimidated by the fact there is an orc going door to door trying to sell insurance with a giant dog. <laughs> yes, a, a giant orc and a giant dog go door. I mean, honestly, this sounds like the beginning of a joke. <laughs> a giant orc and a giant dog go door to door trying to sell cat insurance. <laughs> well, this is extortion the legal way. None of them seem to want to pay up, but yes, they are more than willing to stand out of your way while you post bill. Uh, there is one interesting thing down at the docks, though. As you're going around, can you give me a perception check, Eclik? Sure. And then, actually, our <coughs> friends... All right, so um, while you're around the docks, uh, you actually start hearing people talking about... Uh, there's a rumor going around of, a, of uh, skeletons that have been walking up from the sea into Waterdeep. <laughs> yeah, you're, la you're laughing, but these people are terrified. <coughs> and in no, fact, that, they are... Right. And they are hiring... Um, they are hiring Aledi uh, Aledi hunters to well, so deal with the problem and adventures. Wait, wait, uh, I have a question. Was it were they talking about like only seeing one, or were there multiple? It sounds like there's multiple. Oh, okay. Because I was gonna say say Tegwin didn't come up in Waterdeep, so. No, this 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 is just one of those interesting coincidences in the story. Interesting. <laughs> But yes. trying to get into my tomb. But of course, so, only uh, only uh, Ikhik and the dog heard this. Hmm. Although, and yes, I am doing perception checks for the dog because you're a cat and you can talk and to I the can dog. Talk to him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what? Well, uh, Ikhik is best. Uh doing advertisement. I'm going to see if I can go and meet Pierre. Uh, all right. Um, I presume you guys are just going to keep uh, terrifying the dock workers for a little bit? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> all right. Let us travel to the North Ward then. All right. So this right here, Hawk Winter House, uh, is our, uh, um, is, oh, excuse me, no, just outside of Hawkwinter House. This is our jailhouse. Um, I don't know if you guys can see where I'm highlighting. Yes. Okay, the so. Square 
or triangle. There's like a, a little trapezoid um, facility. This, the largest uh, building here is the um, guardhouse, and the smaller here is the jailhouse. It doesn't have a lot of cells. Uh, it's a pretty small jailhouse, all things considered. However, when the guard doesn't know what else they can do with a prisoner, this is where they're kept. Uh, go up to them. Alright, well, it's gonna take you about an hour to travel there, because it's a long... I mean, the city's enormous, right? But when you get can, there... Can I, can, can I rent a rickshaw? Uh... Yeah, five silver. <laughs> That's a lot for a rickshaw. We're gonna have to keep one on retainer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not like Are you don't good? have a half work to pay it. Yeah, true. Uh, I just walked in and asked Tegwin to get us a rickshaw later. Well, right. Tegwin's not with you, is she? Well, I thought Tegwin was with Ikrik. Yeah. No, I know. I'm. No, I was. Uh, no. I'm, I'm working on a I'm magic with, item. I'm oh, with the dog and the dog. I'm confused. I'm so confused. I thought yeah. the two of. I thought the two of you went down to the dock district. No, I've got to make a charm bracelet, and I've got money, and materials, and spells, and the feats. So yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, meanwhile, you uh, you enter the uh, the facility in the guard's house. There is a single guard sitting at the front desk, who very gruffly addresses you. What do you want? I'll show my lawyer's badge and explain that I am soul from soul. Your your Scrivener's your Scrivener's insignia. You mean? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Because, you I know... I am here to see my client, Pierre. He looks at you. Pierre who? That's all. That is all. That is his name. Pierre. He, he grumbles and uh, can, uh, walks into the back, uh, grumbling something about, let me check our records. And when he comes back, he says, we don't have a Pierre here. Is there a Pierre there? No, Pierre You're not there. Cold. You're not around. <laughs> you can't ask that. I still of not close. Yeah. Does that mean that Pierre never arrived here? Uh, give me a diplomacy check. He's lying through his teeth. You can see that he's getting a little <coughs> bit anxious even talking about Pierre. And he starts not actually saying his name. He said, that person isn't here. We don't have that person. Um, I pin uh, pronounce Pierre. So tell me, does that mean that he was way late? Was there some incompetence uh, going on? I mean, I'm supposed to be here. So, it's the fault, isn't you? He is getting quite frustrated. Um, I, I don't know what you're talking about. There, there, there's no one. There's no one named Pierre here. You need to go. Don't. I, I will get. I will get the sergeant. Whatever they're called. They're not called sergeants, but essentially his superior. I have been just told me a superior. He can maybe. Uh, Explain why people are so incompetent here that they manage to mislay a prisoner. The, the guard is just flustered. He doesn't know what to say. So he storms into the back and gets his sergeant. Uh, when, his, when he returns, the sergeant looks at you and says, So what are you needing now? Oh, I'm just here to see my client, Pierre. You can see the same look of concern in his eyes that you saw in the uh, lower-ranking guards. Uh, he says, uh, realizing that you don't look like you're going to go away, he says, Qu come here, come here. And he leads you to his office. 
Uh, in his office, he has some very expensive sword work in a uh, uh, in a, uh, a rack on his shelf, and a very fine desk. Honestly, this looks a little bit more valuable than what you would expect a guardsman to be able to make. Uh, and he tells you, I don't know what you've heard or what you think is going on, but I can't let you see that prisoner. Well, we have a problem there because I was hired to speak with him. I am his lawyer. So. That's not going to do you thinking? much good without a. That's not going to do you much good without a lord to sit on the lord's court, now is it? Yeah, true, but you still uh, do. Uh... We still do uh, follow the law, and the court is still a thing. Yes, but without a lord court, the law states that it is the watch and the guard's responsibility to maintain the peace. True. So, what's his charge with? Give me a diplom another diplomacy check. Well, he's not... if I must. He wasn't charged with anything. A wealthy donator told me to go and pick him up, and I did. Interesting. However, so... he, he, he refuses to leave. He won't. I've tried getting rid of him. I've tried moving him to other jailhouses. He won't leave. So, you want him to leave, but you can't. Is that it? He looks around as if someone might be watching him. I was I was paid to keep him in jail. It was never stated that it had to be my jail. And there have been no end of lawyers like yourself trying to meet this individual. And don't think that you're special. I doubt he'd talk to you any more than he spoke to the rest of them. True. True, but I'm pretty sure that he's going to speak with me because of who my who uh, his benefactor is. And who might that be? Sorry, I am bound by but by code, I can't uh, speak the name of my benefactor. I don't have benefactors. Uh, Permission. I am here to represent Pierre. You Scriveners are all the same. Come back at a later hour. When the guard shift changes at sundown, I will be able to take you to him, but no sooner. And it's so going it's to cost you. Oh, how much? What do you think? This is a business? Make your offer. I'll just turn to gold sound. He looks around again. He, you can tell he's getting nervous even thinking about this. That will have to do. I'll see you at sundown. And not a moment sooner. Wait until you see the guards leaving. Very well. I head back to my office. Alright. And it, you know, it's about, it's a little after midday now. Um, yeah, the tokens are wherever. Uh, it's a little after midday now. You guys have a few hours more to do things. Uh, whatever it is you'd like. Um, I'm actually going to take just a moment. I'll be right back. So feel free to talk to the audience, talk amongst yourselves, whatever you want to do. I'm going to talk with Tegben. All right. No, you're not. Tegwen has locked herself into her office and is not coming out. He quick finally comes back from the docks with the dog. And the first thing she says out loud when she enters the office, Tegwen! 
Did you go swimming a lot recently? Yes, yes. <clears throat> We're going to have to talk with him later. Yes, Tagwin is locked in her office, and T. Aldry mm -hmm. is telling everyone that she does not wish to be disturbed for the moment. Something about some bad finger food, and she's just not coming out. Doesn't feel like speaking to anyone. Uh, some bad enough. seafood. It just didn't agree with her. This is important. Yeah, we got, uh, we no, we're like... a mistake. Get her <clears throat> out. Mm. Uh, we just have to wait for Tagbin to come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Probably have all the stuff to deal with as well. How did it go at the docks? They've you know? paid the pension. Hmm. That's good. That's good. Mm. That means that we only need to wait for Seth before we can start with part two of that plan. Mm. I wonder what the moneylenders are going to think about when they hear about this new business proposal of mine. What do you think, Iklik? Oh, I think it's going to be very profitable, especially there is no shortage of pests in this city. Oh, true. True. It means that I hope those adventurers uh, show up soon, because we're going to need their help. Indeed. And they should be thankful for the fact that we got their weapons. Indeed. Mm. Well, maybe I'm going to spend a few hours in my basement if nothing else happens soon. You go there. Ika looks angrily at the slave. Go get her from the basement. I don't have the key. I don't care. What are we doing? Trying to get Tegwin out of the basement. Uh -oh. <laughs> Why did you lock yourself in the basement? I've been working on a hat of disguise. I have the money to create it. I've got the feats. Well, how long does that something like that take? 24 hours. Well then, alright. Uh... Make the if you make the investment, you can have a hat of disguise. Outstanding! I'll be out tomorrow morning. <laughs> I started working on this just as soon as we got back, and I finished uh, owning Tealtry. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> cleaning slave is still working. But uh, Sol is going to spend a few hours in the basement digging out the digging out the cellar some more. To make the time pass. You do and like digging, don't let, you? Yeah, and that Ikrik uh, man, the counter, and tell her to let me know when the adventures show up. They were supposed to show up today. Why not? She goes earlier to the pantry and fetches herself a snack and starts sharing it with the dog. The dog it is, is a... very loyal to food. <laughs> Much like my dog, who is LT. I know, I know, but I'm in the middle of doing something. I'll get you in just a minute, okay, baby? Go later. Shall I do mining craft or skill? Uh, considering this is your, your personal house, I'm going to presume that you're just going to mine it. And you are a kobold, so it's not like you're not you're going to do terribly on it. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm yeah. Yeah, I'm going to dig in direction of the this tavern here. <laughs> You're digging for one of the the hotel. You're digging towards one. Okay, now you have to give me a, a craft mining. Also, I must imagine years from now there's going to be this entire maze of uh, of uh, hallways and. <laughs> Levels of uh, dungeon. <laughs> uh, well, you'll be surprised. Um, <laughs> well, you're you're doing a very good job, and you're direct <clears throat> digging in the direction you want to dig, and you're going to make me make a map for your tunnel system, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> but yes, um, uh, yeah. Uh, the time passes, and uh, did I thought your posting was entirely about 
uh, pest insurance, not about hiring adventurers. It was about hiring. We're waiting for the guys that were supposed to come over that we have their weapons. Oh, yes, right. And they do come to the door. They come looking uh, about mid-afternoon. The sun has started moving downward in the sky. And I don't have any good assets of them on hand, do I? No. Um, I didn't plan for us to actually... He quick shouts fun. loudly, BOOMSTICK! Let me just grab... Mm. Three people to manipulate. Um, Boomstick, come here. There we go. We have our three. Uh, they actually enter and come to the the uh, come to the counter and say hello. I'll teach you your jets. Hello. Boomstick. Uh, I believe this is the office that I was told we were told to visit to collect our weapons. Indeed, indeed. Bumstick, go fetch sour. Them. Mm. Probably looks yeah. rather uh, frightened about even touching them. <laughs> uh, the uh, in the basement. He okay, here. Eyes and goes get them. Yeah, it was about midday that they came in. You were digging for a few hours uh, before they came in, and they approach and they thank and they thank you very greatly, uh, explaining that they're basically useless without their weapons. Well, I look over to the halfling and ask him, "Are you interested in work?" Uh, yes, we're always interested in work, sir. Yeah, well, we have this. Uh... You have a couple of situations that you're going to need people helping us with. So, yeah, I am prepared to put you on retainer while you get the details for it. Gladly. What kind of work is this? Uh, security work. Uh, things work out the way I suppose they will. Down at the docks. Uh, certainly. Um... Yeah. Uh, how, much can, uh, we, how much would we be paid? That is details I'm going to have to sort out. It's why I'm su suggesting a retainer of two gold each for a week while I sort out the details. You will likely know before that. Uh, the human, uh, the male human looks kind of frustrated and says five gold each. Uh, you can... Diplomacy, uh, if you yeah. want to haggle that. Just pay him. I'm just going to pay them. Uh, point to them there. We are just happy that you managed to recover your uh, weapons. Did you? Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, female mage speaks up. I'm just surprised you were able to uh, handle those orcs. They were quite formidable. Actually, they were not. <laughs> Eekly her eyebrow. Were they? <laughs> yeah, they no. almost killed you twice, Eekly. <laughs> but I, but I one shot them. <laughs> you, you one shot some of them. <laughs> you liquefied one of them. Yeah, you did make it's, paste out of yeah, one. That's why the, mm -hmm. I am suggesting that you may want to have some training by my orc here. They, they look up at the orc with a bit of intimidation. Uh, if you say so. <laughs> well, I hand them to gold and say, Welcome to a soul of Eclipse. Um, the, uh, the human male says, uh, when he takes his gold, says, uh, Before I do anything, I need to eat. I believe we all need to eat. Uh, yeah. Do you need us probably... tonight? Uh... No, but uh, if you wait a bit, I look at Ikrik. Do we have any food for them? Or we can, or we can just get them the room with food at the hotel next door. Yeah, but I uh, was hoping to have them spend some time here at the moment. I figured you could sort some food for them, and I will go back down to my basement. I look over the halfling. I look over the halfling. The basement doesn't exist. You understand? 
<laughs> and the halfling just nods. Yes, that's good. That is the basement. Let she me looks go to the basement. <laughs> she looks at the slave and beckons him. Hey, boomstick. This is money. You go fetch food for a guest. You be back before I manage to count to fifty. One. Um, <laughs> he he, 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 he freaks Sorry? out and starts running. Uh, he freaks out and starts running. Um, I'm just making some character sheets for your your new teammates. Oh shit! You know what I completely spaced on. Idra is with y'all, and she's just oh. kind of she's just kind of sitting there, <coughs> watching everything happen as everything goes on. She's just chilling with y'all. So, Idra, 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 there you are. I Shall forgot. I do another? Her icon didn't save. Oh, bastardly. I, I figured she kind of went her own way when uh, when we got into town. I, I forgot to completely roleplay that out. When she got into town, uh, I'm surprised none of y'all talked to her. But when she gets into town, she uh, she sticks with y'all for a bit and then heads her own way, yes. But I, I, I completely spaced on her, so I messed that up. I figured she would have been laughing or... Uh, extra arms off at the play of magical prowess on Broomstick. Oh, absolutely. Also, Broomstick uh, is a great did name. Did you write down the 350 gold we have for the office? Well, um, uh, what are you asking? Tegwin is sequestered in the closet. Yeah, uh, just asking <coughs> you the closet. I want to know if you know to it. No. Well, Mr. Um, Keeper of the Monies, did you note it down? I don't think I have. Oh, there is a loot note. I have way too many windows open. <laughs> I missed the loot note. Okay. Kali, you selected token, save changes. And now we'll get these character sheets sorted out in time. And I'm going must... to put on 200 of my own gold and divide that between Tagve, Seth, Ikrik. You guys have so much bloody money. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, I'm 900 shorter now. <clears throat> well, yes, you, you invested it, but nonetheless. <laughs> That is because that is the money that we got from the sporks, and it needs to be divided by the team. So, so you need 400 more added to it? Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have 400 more, it would be nice to divide that between all of us, but if... This team well, there, is was, there was the, the... in the loot notes, there was... Did you go ahead and... Oh, okay, you went ahead and added that. Yes, unfortunately for you, it's in my closet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I divided 200 gold on you, Trin. Mm -hmm. okay. you, figure, you figure out how it's divided, but it's for Ikrik, Tegbin, and Seth. How, how much money? 200. 200. So, that doesn't divide evenly, does it? Yeah, it does not. <laughs> Okay, 50 gold each. Okay. Well, that's that's even less. That's m even less. Uh, so, so 70, seven, 70 gold each? Six, it's 66 gold each. It's a little more than 66, but we can... Well, 67. 66 gold, 6 <laughs> silver, 6 copper. And then you have a whole whopping copper left over. I but you two take 70 and I take 50 and we call it even. Alright. Okay. Okay. Sort of Alright. But by uh, the way, Ikrig, did you note your 35 gold from the drinking I contest? Did. I, I did. Okay. Okay, so we have tear guns. I have a, I have a lot, lot of money to spend on a. Ik right now. 
Okay, so we have Tyrgens, who is the halfling. We have Lemas, who is the male human, and we have Kali, who is the female human. And we're still waiting on Broomstick. Yes, well, Broomstick rushes out the door and goes over to the inn. He rushes back in the door carrying, well, three doggy the bags. The moment he enters, Ikei goes, 47, 48, 49. He's rushing <laughs> over to a table to set the table for them. And uh, the God, it's going to be so humiliating for him. <laughs> the adventurers are kind of weirded out by all of this. They're they're not they're not wealthy adventurers, and so when they see a servant half orc rushing out the door and rushing back in, they just kind of move over to where he's setting the table for them, in order to stay out of the way. And well, they're not going to turn down food, so. Um, good enough, well, Boomstick. Good enough. And also, yeah, and also he, know that he like just to... pats Boomstick on the head, head like he's some old, old infant. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. It's clear that these adventurers <laughs> hadn't eaten in the last day or so. That they're actually quite hungry as they rather quickly start devouring the food put before them. Oh uh, yes, no <laughs> that. Well, I'm glad the uh, food agrees with you. Uh, they thank you. They thank, um, they thank Broomstick. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they are just waiting around. Um, the time is approaching when you guys would need to be heading over to the, uh, to the jailhouse again. Uh, you don't have uh, to did, did, uh, speak to the people. You don't have to thank him. He's he's not not a creature. He's a broomstick. <laughs> uh, uh, Lemus just laughs at this. He is clearly the most uh, the most okay with all of it. <laughs> the other two well, have their reservations, but they say nothing and continue eating their food, appreciative just to have work and food. Well, I said to them that um, well, me and my team has to do some legal matters, so if you will be willing to watch over the office while you're gone and report on any unusual happenings when you come back. Wow, <laughs> you are trusting. You are so trusting letting three strangers just stay in your office. Your main he he just says, boomstick, sit. Boomstick, defend. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at them angrily. They remember this. They remember this orc once they get a moment to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you want to leave it in their hands, since they're being paid for it, they're willing to do it, although they do ask, what do we do if someone comes to the shop? We are closed. Okay. Indeed. <coughs> I just make sure that uh, most of the doors here are locked, but so they only have access to the lobby for, say, uh, so to speak. Okay. Uh, Tagwin Did... is going to be in his uh, scribe's <laughs> closet <laughs> all night, so at least you're not completely alone. They're not completely alone. I'll fetch Ikrik's uh, fine clothes, if, he, if uh, she has them. Fetched what? The fine clothes. Ah, yes. Um, do you have fine mm. clothes? You might need to buy fine clothes. I probably have one of those emergency sets. <laughs> well, they cost... Uh, fine clothes cost money normally. Uh, I know in 5e mm. you tend to start with fine clothes, but in Pathfinder you have to declare it. Which means no, it's my I, fault because I, I made it was your because I made your character sheet. Well, let's call it one of those emergency rations, that stuff you wear once a year for graduation. Orcs don't graduate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but that, that's kind of the point. Orcs don't graduate. They 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 kill. The closest you would have would be like a war outfit. <laughs> As long as it's fancy, that is all it needs to be. 
this is the skull of my cousin, Glashnok. I told him no. He said yes. <laughs> well, there you go. You could go to fetch her pro war armor. <laughs> All right. Actually, honestly, your parade armor would probably do fine. Yeah. So fine. Let's just do that and. I'm looking for Seth. Uh, hoping Seth is here as well. Well, uh, I, Seth was. Seth, yeah. Yeah. Here. I was. Did she ever leave Mertz? That would be your choice, because, I mean, this has just been time you've been watching the car- Oh, but, uh, Ciara leaves around 3, 3.30, you know, mid, uh, mid-afternoon. Uh, right. she- well, so there- they- Mert's Moneylenders was closed for, like, a good few hours, uh, while they spoke. And at certain points, you could hear them getting loud, but you really couldn't make out anything they were talking about. <laughs> that said, just from them getting loud and being able to see through the window, you could see there's an animosity be between these two. Uh, it's not quite clear what the animosity is. However, you can tell in facial expressions especially that the two of them are competing uh, for something and only working together out of some necessity. Okay. When she leaves, she, uh, uh, Mert lets her out the door, and uh, he reopens his shop, and she gets into her cart, and the cart takes its route, uh, takes the route back that it, that it came on, and then heads uh, uh, west back towards uh, Piagron's, uh, Piagron's palace, essentially okay. the location she told you about. I wonder if Tegbe is able to create a coach cart. I could probably do better than that, but right now I'm not going to. I'm busy. Tegman has to make a hat. A very fine hat. <laughs> With two cats in the yard. Oh my god. Um, a cat and a dog in the yard, actually. Not uh, if I put my hat on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually. That's very true. Uh, but doesn't the, doesn't the wearer of the hat have to think of what they want to be? That dog hero worships you. <laughs> that dog wants that. to be a cat at this point. Um, well, anyways, I'm gonna follow, uh, to, um, the Piergaran's palace or whatever, wherever she is, and I just kind of want to, like, case... The, the area, see what's, like, what kind of uh, security measures are um, in place, um, you know, what may or may not, like, be locked, you know, if there are any guard looking in any windows, are there any guards, you know, all, all obviously while trying to keep. Okay. Well, um, the travel time is is going to take up a little bit more of the afternoon, but by the end, you get to the far end of Waterdeep Way, so in the southwest corner of the map. Well, south center of the map, really. Uh, at this house, do you see where I'm highlighting? Um, uh, hold on. Yeah. Okay, so at this build, she, uh, the, the carriage parks here, and she gets out, and then the carriage pulls away, uh, heading up the sh Street of Selks, and she walks inside. It is a very nice house. However, there are no guards outside, uh, merely a very fine locked double door, uh, and it's a two-story building. Uh, honestly, other than the fact that it's so much larger than the rest of the houses around, it's somewhat nondescript. You can, uh, give me a, um, uh, Whatever it's called, perception. Mm -hmm. You can tell that there used to be much more to this place before it was just a house. Um, looking in the window, you can see that it has a very open floor plan on the bottom floor, suggesting that this used to be a tavern or a shop of some sort. And above the door, you can see a place where a sign used to hang, but has been removed. 
right. Okay. Um, I go around the back of the house um, to see if there is also like a cellar, cellar doors. Uh, there's no external cellar door. However, from a window, you can see a uh, you can see a door that presumably leads to the cellar because it's there are stairs nearby that are heading up as well. Okay. Um, and other than like so, other than the windows, how many external entrances are there? Three. There is a servant's entrance at the far point in the back. There is a. Um, kind of just a little uh, <coughs> place to sit with a back entrance here and then there's the main front entrance okay and um i'd like to climb on top of the house is it um just a like a regular roof like are there um or you know like is it a flat roof or it's an angled roof uh pretty regular and um, from up there, you can see how beautiful Piergaron's palace is. <laughs> nice. Uh, are there any of those, like, window, like, attic windows or anything up there? Yes. However, all of them are closed. Okay. Uh, give me all a perception right. check. All right. Uh, in the attic, through one of the windows, you can see multiple people all working with grindstones to sharpen knives. Hmm. Interesting. There's about four of them in there, and it seems like this is all they're doing. They spend quite a lot of time grinding knives to a fine edge. What else do I see? Like, are there piles of knives? Uh, there is a box that they're getting their knives from. It's a, uh, it's unlabeled. Uh, each of them has their own little works, work desk, uh, and uh, they're wearing pretty nondescript clothes other than the fact that it's black leather. And black leather is a little more difficult to come by than just, you know, whatever the leather color is, which, um, you know, well, there... I mean, yeah, I mean, tan or brown or whatever color it might be, this has clearly been dyed. Uh, and these don't look like people who could afford dyeing leather. Uh, do I see any kind of, like, symbols or anything on the that leather? No. Alright. Do I recognize those knives? Y yes, you do. You would recognize those knives from the time you took a walk on Warrior's Way from the, guy, from the thieves who had followed you. A, a yeah. special, a special curvature to them. Interesting. Um, I, I take note of that, and um, I, considering I was looking for stuff, but was at, surprised by this. Um, I look along the edge of the building to see if there are any windows with ledges that I might be able to peek into those <laughs> other windows. Um, unfortunately, the only ledges have their shutters closed, blocking the ledge from being stood on. Okay. Just too narrow of a, too narrow of a strip to be stood on. Alright. And it's still kind of, like, in the middle of the day? Uh, it's approaching sundown at this point. Okay. Um, Seth's gonna go ahead and jump down and just kind of head back to... Head back towards Saul's. Alright. Just going to be jumping between maps a lot, apparently. Um, Sorry about that. No, it's fine. I just, it was just something I was thinking about. I was like, huh, I am switching maps a lot today. Um, but yes, um, back at Saul's, there is actually a familiar face sitting outside the front door. Is it that, uh, that weird beggar... It's the shiny Dragon beggar. Thing? It's the shiny beggar, yes. yes. I, 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 I walk up to him and I stare at him. He stares back and almost um, superstitiously begins backing away from you. I, 
I, I, I want to take a really, really good look at him. And also, like, do I get a dragony type aura or anything like that from him? Uh, well, you're gonna have to actually give me a will check. Alright. It's under defenses. Ah, <coughs> oh, you just edged over it. Uh, yeah, you know what? This, this, this person doesn't smell like a person. This person doesn't give off the vibe of a person. They certainly do give off the vibe of a dragon. That said, their behavior is the complete opposite of a dragon acting afraid of a cat. Alright, I'm gonna, I can roll, I'm, I want, like I said, I want to take a really, really deep look at him. I'm gonna roll perception. Alright, so... I want to note so... everything that I can note. Uh... He looks different than the last time you saw him. Uh, in fact, this time along his jaw, uh, despite trying to use beard to cover it up, you can see the, the speckling and shining of white scales tracing his jawline. Likewise, along the bones that extrude from his wrists. He's very thin, he's very emaciated. He uh, smells quite, quite a lot like alcohol. He smells drunk as fuck, but he doesn't look drunk. <laughs> um, his, uh, <coughs> uh, his shimmer is somewhat obscured by the dirt, however, no amount of dirt would ever cause this shimmering glow of his skin to dissipate any. Uh, and when he catches you, you know, staring him down, he turns away and Starts to walk away, but doesn't actually go that far. All right. Um, I would like to do a sense motive. Wherever it is. God, where is it? How wow, these rolls tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, he clearly just wants to beg for food. He is starving, he is hungry, he is intimidated by the fact that there's a cat for some reason. But beyond all that, he just wants food. He looks very hungry, and he thinks this is a place where he might be able to get a handout. He, uh, Seth, breaking his coat. Well, does he look like a human, or does he look like non-human? You said he, he has the like scales... Human. He looks like right. a human. He's covering up what few little markers uh, show that there's something different about him, except for the one he can't hide, the, sh the shimmering skin. But otherwise, he looks rather human. And he look at other, and he, 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 he look, does, does the, uh, does he, I mean, he's emaciated, but does he look like he's trying to look like a beggar? Or does he no, look he, like he he's looks as like a beggar? A beggar. He looks like a beggar. There's like he doesn't look like someone who's trying to look deceptive. No, not at all. There's no deception in his eyes. He's, if anything, he's terrified. He, uh, Seth, stare, uh, keeps walking closer towards him, staring at him. I'm just curious what his action reaction will be. Uh, as you approach, he takes a step back, but eventually stops and tries to watch you to figure out what you're doing. Seth kind of looks down, um, not like at him, um, just so his voice kind of throws a little bit because he's going to talk to him while in cat form. You, what do you want? <laughs> his eyes widen. I'm just, I'm just hungry. I was able to get alcohol from another person, but, but I, I, I need food. I need food badly. You're standing against a tavern, and you're looking in the lawyer's office? You all were so kind yeah. before. Did yeah, they give the him anything? Yes. Oh, I, I, yeah, I did. I did. I, <laughs> I was straight up from, like, yeah, hangovers are a nasty thing. Here, have, a, have some coin. Mm. 
he sits, uh, sits back and like looks or actually he he walks up the steps and looks at him i don't know how tall the steps are what like three feet how tall is this guy uh he's about six foot okay so so stuff stuff kind of walks up so he can get a, a better look at the look in the guy's eyes and says <sighs> we're all strays aren't we he's uh, he's kind of speechless uh it's not that he's surprised that you can talk it's that he's surprised that you did uh and he he pauses and stutters before saying i i i i just don't want to lose control and then he covers his mouth really quickly and before he has any before you have any chance to say anything he runs off uh Seth, Seth says, wait, wait, I have food. He's long gone by the time that you say that. He is quite intimidated. Although it's safe to say he's, it's not so much that he's intimidated by you, but clearly something's intimidating him. All right. Hmm. Seth sighs and scratches at the door because he's still in cat form, so he can't open the door. Uh, the dog starts barking because something's scratching at the door and it smells like mommy. <laughs> or it smells like daddy, rather. <laughs> he goes up and opens the door. The dog uh, runs to greet you as well. The dog runs to greet you as well. He, uh, he, he rubs on the dog and then he rubs on E Creek and then he climbs up E Creek to like sniff her fingers. <laughs> And see if she has food. There's food on the table, Kitty. He mm. he jumps down and goes to eat food. <laughs> all right, it's uh at this point, Saul, you better you need to be making your way towards the uh, jailhouse again. Yes, I want Ikrif with me and Seth. Okay. Good choice. Um, Seth uh, chows on some food and he says, um, are, so are we walking there? Yeah, we are, until Tegven is able to, no, no, damn it, we're not walking. I'll pay five silver for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> are yeah. we, um, we're getting a rickshaw. Do, do you want me in cat form or do you want him in human form? Cut for. Uh, you may need to create a distraction. Uh, the case is this: Pierre isn't arrested for anything. He's been. He's stored yeah. at uh, this uh, jailhouse. He's not in. He's, he's not charged with anything. Hmm. So the way I see it is that we are going to go inside to talk with him. If we can get away with it, I want Ikrik to punch him out and just carry him outside. If you can All right. Fast now, if now, we... um, uh, while, so if we're in a rickshaw or whatever, um, basically Seth kind of relates what he's found out throughout the day. And he's he really that he that he had a conversation with his mother when they were in um, that other town, whatever it was called, and um, that something's not right, something's off, and we need to be very careful that uh, we are not getting played. We need a counter plan because money uh, money doesn't save your back. Um, I already plan on it. Well, money does save, save our back, but only mm. if it's from our own sources. That is why I got a job for you at the warehouse when you're done with this. Mm. I take jobs that I want to take. So oh, I have a feeling you're gonna like that one. They do, they do import some dairy there. We just want you to make a mess in the warehouse. Yeah. And all the fresh tuna out of the sea you can eat in the pearls. <clears throat> he, um, 
he kind of sits there and licks his paw and then rubs it over his head a little bit. And he says, I'll think about it. By the way, there are three people in here who are staring at a talking cat. Mm. Wait, I thought that we were not... We're in the rickshaw already. Oh, okay, in the rickshaw. I'm Mm. sorry, I misunderstood. Also, by the way, I'm not really sure, but what we should do and it's whether do we need to keep Tegwin closed in that closet of hers or get her out soon. Because well, when, we when I was posting our advertisement in the docs, I've heard something quite disturbing. Yeah, we we ask, we will talk with Tegwin in the morning and Tegwin is done with whatever she's doing. But there's no need to interrupt. There her were whatever. people talking about skeletons swimming up in the sea and walking out shore and them hiring Eleti hunters. <laughs> yeah, but that is not the first time we hear this story. So I'm pretty sure it's related to the other story about undead in the area. And I believe it's not Tegwin. I know it's not Tegwin. She hasn't been going out swimming last check. Exactly. But we can't do anything about that now. So <laughs> we resolve it when we can. All right, it's a pretty straightforward trip up the high road to the jailhouse again. And uh, when you get there, there are guards who are leaving out the front door, and Um, it looks like you're arriving just in time for the uh, changing of the guard. Well, while we were on the road on the way there, um, Seth tries to extract from Saul what exactly he wants him to be doing. Uh, in here. Yes. I just you want you to just uh, follow, follow along like you belong, and you play it by ear. As uh, if I can talk this guy out, that is the best. If I can't talk him out, and I decide to let Ikrik extract him, you may need to do what you can to uh, give us time we need to get him out. Well, I do things stealthily, so I'm not much of a distraction maker. Uh, um, if I'm, you... pre- I'm pretty Six sure you can piss. You, I'm pretty sure you can piss off a bunch of uh, stray dogs. Well, I, I, <clears throat> I'm sure that would be a lot of fun. Um, d- so, did you ex- you explained that he was? not necessarily a prison like did you explain everything that the guard said to us or pretty much yeah. okay yeah. but so so Seth goes um he it sounds like does he want to leave because that may be more of the problem than anything else i'm pretty sure he doesn't want to leave but he needs to leave because have you thought stay. that maybe he wants protection from our client? Well, if he pays me a coin, then he becomes my client. You know my policy about that. Well, yes, but Sierra paid you too. Yeah, but, but you I, know, I, if you if I, you want to if you want to play the devil against the devil, well, it'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Exactly. He, yeah, uh, he, he. I assume at that point, that's when we're arriving at the thing, and he just kind of hops down from the, the rickshaw. Well, see, Kitty. At the end of the day, who pays more? <laughs> well, I head towards the guardhouse then and see if I meet that officer again. The uh, sergeant is standing in the front room waiting for you. Uh, he tells you to wait uh, until the last of the guards have left, which doesn't take very long at all. They were already leaving. And uh, afterwards, he beckons to you to follow, and then he notices that there's a giant orc with you and pauses. Wait, I thought it was just you. This is my companion, Ikrik. I saw it. I'm from Solon Ikrik. This is Ikrik. <laughs> and a point of him. Ik- Ikrik smi- smiles widely. Mm. Fine, just 
be quick about this. I'm going to have to keep the guard away just for your protection in this situation. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but that guy doesn't know you. <laughs> Uh, he leads you around through the back door and uh, takes you to the jailhouse uh, entrance to the uh, the the jail uh, the cell's entrance basically. But as he's opening the door, there's a shouting in the distance. Can you all give me a perception check? <laughs> I noticed a mouse on the ground. It's delicious. <laughs> I really hope that, uh, I really hope that, uh, Saul gets a better one. Good. All right, Saul, you can tell that in the distance, someone is actually shouting the word dragon. They sound quite terrified. However, that shouting is quickly silenced by the sound of a roaring flame that tears th across the Tower March Road, setting fire to the tops of about five or six houses. The, fire ca the smoke from the fire can be seen from where you are, and not long after, a giant red dragon flies overhead and loops around before setting fire to the entirety of this little triangle area. For some reason, this dragon wants to meet Pierre as much as y'all do. Uh, I guess curse and say... Oh, uh, you're going to have to do Pierre more than now. curse. You're going to have to do more than curse. You're going to have to all roll a reflex check. Or a reflex save. If you want to get safely inside the building. Or semi-safely inside the building. Yeah. It's under defenses. Okay, Seth, you take 1d4 fire. Iklik, you pass. Arakeen, you take 1d4 fire. Shall I just call it? Call, uh, roll it. Yeah, just roll 1d4, both of you. Oh, great. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, cat fur is flammable. You guys are able to make it in the door, but with, not without some injuries. And the guard is basically cursing. What the fuck is going on? And he, and he's, he's Seth's kind of looking down, and because he's distracted and hurt, he's going, fuck, 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 fuck. The guard isn't even paying attention. The, the, uh, <laughs> the, the guard sergeant says, you've got five minutes. Five minutes. I'm waiting right here. There's no one else around. He points to a cell at the very end on the left and says, there's your man, go talk. Okay. I, I hurry there and uh, raise for Ikrik to uh, come with me. Hmm. I fo Ikrik follows him inside the cell. Outside, huh? by the way, you can hear uh, the rush of troops' boots coming around. It sounds like the uh, the watch have surrounded the area, or at least you can hear them outside the uh, the barred windows of the uh, jailhouse from where you are. So, so is the roof on fire? Uh, no, just the field. Damn it, bastard! Launch game again, please. Thank you. Uh, no, just the field in between the walls is so far. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pierre, uh, how does he look? Uh, he, Pierre is a isn't a very tall man. His face seems very nondescript. Um, however, he stands at about six feet, uh, a little shorter than six feet tall. He's got black hair. He's got very dark brown eyes. Uh, and other than that, he's he's only wearing a a a single rag covering himself. Uh, he sits kneeling in his cell, uh, and he doesn't even look up when you approach. However, he does say, there is nothing to talk about. Oh, yeah, uh, there is. <clears throat> uh, well, do you want to be burned to a crisp? Just out of curiosity. 
it would be a better option than freedom at this point. <sighs> I try to convince him to uh, join us and leave this place with diplomacy. I have what? to try. No, well, what are you ask him say? what he's afraid of. I don't have time. That's the problem. We don't have time for long conversation. Alright, so what exactly are you trying to convince him with? Convince him to join us with knowing that it's better to be under our protection at uh, being you can't. Out Unfortunately, you're not going to believe me, but that wasn't high enough to pass. And he says, nothing can protect me from what I need protecting from. He's very I... calm. He's very uh, just still, despite all the chaos that's going on around. And that there is a lot of chaos going around. The roof is starting to burn, and bits of the ceiling are, be are beginning to fall. Not in the cells, which are made of stone, but uh, in the hallway, the lanterns are starting to uh, are starting to uh, flare up as other fires nearby uh, start sucking air out of the area. So oxygen oh is getting God. sucked up, and the torches okay. in the room are flaring up in response. Okay, uh, question, question. Uh, how many minutes will it take for Ikrik to carry this guy? Uh, it's not a very, you, it's not a very large room. Can. It's not a very large uh, area, but you also have the sergeant at the door still. Yeah, but uh, rushing, uh, rushing, uh, carrying him, rushing out, uh, out uh, around the sergeant, and uh, just. Uh, are there are him. there any like open window? Any is there any entrance into this place other than the door we came in? No. And you also have to take into consideration that the the cell is locked. Well, I have tools, which is why I assumed he was bringing me along. That helps. Um, but. Yeah, the the problem the problem is the guard. Um, and if he stand, I can make him vanish. You can make who vanish? The prisoner. Uh, okay, That's but okay to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, you're unless you want me to reveal myself, which Seth isn't going to do. You are going to have to find a way for to convince the guard that this prisoner needs moved, or he's going to burn to death. He looks up at y'all and says, "You know not what you've gotten yourselves involved in. I pity you." Um, I. I hurry back to the sergeant. Okay, he's just, you know, it's like we're talking about 15 steps. 15, 20 steps from one side uh, to the other. Uh, we need to move him now. His cell is on fire. He, he groans and grumbles. Uh, can you all give me another perception check? And preferably also a reflex save. All of us? Yes. <sighs> Up. Don't worry, this one's actually not that not nearly as hard as before. <laughs> Oof, okay, well uh you don't entirely see what's happening, Seth, however, the others do, because there's a loud creaking and shaking before a large red dragon foot comes down, crushing the door, the wall beside the door, and the, the, the sergeant with it. Oh, so there okay. is now a much larger exit. <laughs> I grabbed the and... keys from the sergeant. But outside, there is quite a lot of fire, mind you. The, a... the sergeant is now dead? Yeah, no, yeah. The, the dragon came down and has right. crushed the the part of the roof. Let me grab my paintbrush. He has crushed part of the roof here. And is standing there pecking at the roof quite intensely. Breathing fire, trying to break the roof open. 
I grab the keys from the sergeant and then rush back to the cell. Alright. Oh wait, no, you can't. It's under it's under a foot. You can't get those keys. They're under some they're under something's foot. Something right, very so big and scary. There's no door left. <laughs> okay, we ha okay, Seth, then Seth, we ha Seth, Seth sighs, he quickly transforms, which takes about six seconds, and uh, then he takes out his um, picks and works at the door. Guys, there's no door left. <laughs> On the cell there is, there's just yeah, the no door. the cell door is still there. Okay. There's just a hole where the entrance to the house had been. The cell house had been, rather. <laughs> A, a hole in a foot, or a couple feet, I should say. Uh, sorry, is it disabled device then, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> Shit! You've gotta be kidding me! It's a really good lock. It's a really good lock. Uh, so, uh. Um, uh, not terribly. Uh, I mean, it's as sturdy as steel rod doors can be. Uh, if it costs shattering shard or Icklix weapon, can she bash it open? Uh, maybe? Um, I, 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 uh, Adua might want to try disabling device again. I mean, it's only yeah. a matter, it's only a time okay. thing. You guys right. are on a, you know, you guys, there you go! That's how you unlock a door. <laughs> he, he's, he's like still stinging a little bit from the, the, his, fur being singed. Okay. The uh, the dragon puffs and takes off, pushing flames back a little bit, but the flames remain, and he takes to the sky, and he's flying circles still. And um, at this point, he's, uh, the, he's just, uh, Pierre's just sitting there. He's not doing anything. He's not reacting to the cell door being open. He just remains there, kneeling. Well, well, he can grab him. Yeah, grab him. I, um, and that's what she actually does. It's like, we're done with you. <clears throat> she picks him up and starts carrying him out by force. <clears throat> he says yeah, nothing I, and does nothing in the process. I put He's on just... a mask and then I cast Vanish on Pierre and Vanish on Iknik and said to Iknik, just run for it. Uh, Seth that's knows. what she does. <laughs> Seth, Seth transfer, uh, transforms back into a cat and, and GTFOs. Now let's not forget that there are walls on all sides. The only thing you have going for you is the fact that uh, well, yeah, can you're I, very close big, to how, a wall. How nine big are walls. the walls? Nine, nine foot. foot? Nine oh, nine foot. foot. No, these uh, are not the. These are. Th we're not talking about the the downs walls. <laughs> we're talking about the, uh, the, the 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 jail walls. Can can I, like, try to acrobatics over the walls? Yes. And you do it. All right. Well, uh, I crossed Vanish on myself, lastly, mm -hmm. and also just to run for it. All right, where, which way are you guys, how are you guys trying to get out? I mean, are you guys going towards... The gatehouse? Are you guys going to try and acrobatics over the wall? Are you guys going after this wall? There's a lot of fire between okay. here and there. There, you, less fire going this way, but you have to make a. Uh, you would have to make an acrobatics, and Iklik would have to make an acrobatics while burdened. So minus two. Yeah, I will have to just uh, run for it. Uh, yeah. Well, I thought we just run for it uh, through the gatehouse because that's the only exit available. I can acrobatics. All right. Well, I guess you guys are running this way then. I'm gonna need um one, two. But I, I cast create water on any flames in the in the way. You cast what? Create water. Okay. Do you have the uh, slots for that? I presume you do. It's a cantrip. Oh, good. Then yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would just do that to create a trail of water to secure your path, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you get into the gatehouse, guards are entering. Mo uh, actually, not guards. They're wearing the watch insignia. 
and most of them are archers. Um, they are far less worried about you, or escapees for that matter, because this isn't their jail, and are more concerned about getting past you. So, oh, well. as you guys are running out, they are running in, and uh, like all of the other archers, of which there are like 60 around at this time, uh, they are all firing arrows up at the red dragon that is circling overhead. Um, I guess to run for it back to the office. All right, and, and the um, funny thing is, they did see us. Oh yeah, they saw you. They saw, but I mean, this is the watch. No, uh, we were vanished. Oh well, okay, yeah, good point. You you were vanished, so they didn't see you, and they don't care about a cat escaping a fire. So. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it with you guys heading back to the back to the office. Oh Seth's man, gonna, Seth's Seth going to go in the court case. Uh, uh, Seth's going to um, go find some place to chill out and have some fun because fuck fires. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Slut Street. <gasps> All right. <laughs> not, I'm not kidding. There is a slut street in uh, in Waterdeep. <laughs> well, I just won my first big court case. Uh, Remaining yes. silent during all that was not easy. I bet not. Oh I'm man! I'm missing all the fun while I'm locked in a closet making that, a hat. I'll be honest. That's some fun that I've had planned since the beginning. By the way. There were like four or five ways that could have gone, so I'm really impressed that you guys actually got him out of there. Uh, you know, without glad pissing I, everyone off. <laughs> glad I um, was able or bought those picks early on. Yes, good choice. Um, yeah, because the alternative was for Akrik to bash the door open using shattering short. So what do y'all think so far? Is is the intrigue getting to y'all yet? Well, there's so many things going on, and I'm yes, trying to yes, I'm yes. trying to piece it all together. There's a there's a beautiful story going on here, and I can't wait until it fully unfolds. But at the moment, it still hasn't fully unfolded. There is still a number of things to look into. And uh, God, I love this story, and I'm so glad to be playing it with y'all, to be making it with y'all because there's so much more depth. To it now that I'm because of the way we're doing it instead of me just saying oh this and this and this and this it's quite well, fun I'm enjoying myself thank you all so much well, I just glad realized to that we're going to need a gunsman we need to recruit a gunsman a gunsman mm -hmm. mm. we are going to need smoke powder a lot of it mm. <laughs> I prefer just throwing the daggies. But they're and effective I... with the way you're able to throw them into people's temples. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wait until I get some magical daggers. Oh, man. I <laughs> shot. <didn't do> <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, yes. I've um... been thinking that smog powder will solve a lot of problems. For instance, that Moneylander merch. I wonder how it would react if he filled his basement with smog powder. Oh, Do you um, really want to mess with Merch the Merch the Moneylender? Merch the Moneylender. I... <laughs> <laughs> you know what Smoke the Merch is? I um I I'm 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 I You know it's interesting. I get it that you want to like fuck with everyone, but um he you might know. be more valuable as an ally than as You a like I explained like you heard and I explained everything that I saw between the two of them, and I uh, not only thanks to mom, but sh that woman I don't like her. You want to fill her basement with smoke powder? Yes, yes mm. I do actually. Hers is harder to access. <laughs> uh, not really, we only need to buy a house besides her. But, Good uh, luck with that. We're going to need a lot more gold. I, I, I definitely am going to like be checking that woman's house for traps and shit, and and entering because 
She's got some secrets that need to be revealed. Detecting yeah, magic but, and entering. Uh, but Saul is able to work against her actively until she betrays him or breaks the contract with Saul. He is a lawyer from hell. Well, 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 let's put it this way. Just because you're under contract doesn't mean that I'm under contract. That's true. Kathy, That's true. You're the cat. You're just a bed cat, yeah. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just doing whatever I feel like doing. Okay, so each of you gain 1,500... Excuse me. 1,500 experience points for this because this was a big part of the story and... Uh, well, it, it singed some fur, so... Yeah. <laughs> that it did. Unhappily. Uh, no, this is actually... You guys really did get the best... Get the best result you could out of this situation. And things are about to get weirder in West, in uh, Waterdeep. Much more interesting, so I cannot wait until next week when I can show you what happens next, or let you guys find out for yourselves. And until then... That's why you have, uh, until then, why you have a oh, plan B. Yes. Thank you all, <clears throat> everyone in the audience, for watching. Thank you all for playing, and I will catch you next time. Like, like subscribe, and share. See you guys. Bye.